This is Chris Yandek for CY Interview. Today on the debut episode of CY Interview on YouTube, we welcome actress Kiara Barnes from the hit Fox TV show, Fantasy Island. Kiara, thanks so much for being with us on CY Interview today. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So just to begin, um, I guess the question everyone probably asks you when they meet you, why did you want to be an actress? <laughs> yes, that is a common question, but it is a good question. Um, I have always, like since I was super young, been infatuated with performing, singing. You know, I was that kid that was like, I want to show you a dance to my parents and the family. And um, But weirdly enough, I was really shy, like when it came to like theater and school and things like that. But deep down, I always thought that one day, like I would be going to the deli with my mother and a Disney exec would be like, do you want to be on an episode of That's So Raven? Like that was like my dream as a child, how I thought it would pan out. Um, yeah, but just got inspired by like actually doing extra work. That was really what sparked it was being on a set and seeing all the movie magic happening. So, you know, most people before we get to the Fox role know you from, of course, the bold and the beautiful as Zoe Buckingham. Was being a soap actress and the fact that you have to read so many scripts, memorize so many lines, do you think that was a, a good preparation for all the other acting that has come after? And do you think being a soap actress, because you're always going to have to learn new material, shoot more episodes, that it's the most challenging job in acting? Oh, I mean, absolutely. I had no idea what I was getting into when I first got onto that show. And everyone kept like kind of telling me, oh, you know, it, it's actor's boot camp, it's actor's boot camp, but you don't really understand. It is a machine. Like soap operas, on average, they shoot anywhere between four to, on some days, I think I've done seven to eight episodes in one day. No joke. Um, just because they're at least two something months ahead of schedule. They air Monday through Friday. So you have to imagine, like, that is a ton of episodes to make sure that you're on top of. And specifically, when I was um, on The Bold and the Beautiful, it even ramped up after um, the lockdown happened because for the first time in history, soaps were re-airing episodes. So when that stopped um, and we came back into production, they even threw on more episodes to make sure that if there were ever any case scenario of a lockdown, that they would be triple, double covered um, for weeks on end. So... I, one, learned how to work under extremely fast-paced work environment. Um, you know, you think that you get a lot of time, but on average, you get two takes. Two takes per scene because they have to keep rolling it out and going. So I learned uh, really good improv skills, <laughs> time management, and um, how to just handle a lot of, you know, pressure really to make sure that you're still delivering and and if anyone's watched a soap, it's monologue after monologue. So my memory now, I wish I had this in high school and college because it would have served me very well. But um, now it's great because if I get any last minute changes on anything else I do, it's like, okay, nothing, you know. What did you major in in college? Communications, actually. Yeah, communications. I did actually want to go into uh, sociology, but... I don't know. I, th I think at the time when I was getting into it, I was really also d dipping and diving into the entertainment industry. And that always will have my heart. Well, that explains the whole podcast, which we'll talk about in a little bit. I really have enjoyed listening to some of those episodes. But to begin moving forward, just one quick follow up. So when you're a soap actress, how many days out of the calendar year are you shooting? <laughs> Um, nearly every day. I'm like, yeah. we have, um, you know, our, we have Christmas off. Um, I, gosh, you know, we have a summer break, but summer break was like two weeks, maybe I think two weeks, but you're, sh you're shooting year round, you know, every single day, uh, besides the weekends, of course, you know, but we shoot Monday through Friday. Um, but it's just, it's, it's a lot of hours in the studio and talking about like going into a studio before the sun gets up and leaving when the sun is gone and just doing that over and over again is kind of a trippy experience. 
So now going towards it, Fantasy Island, of course, is Monday nights on Fox. Um, what has that experience been like shooting this show on location in Puerto Rico? Oh, my gosh. Amazing. I mean, talk about Rosalind Sanchez. She always mm -hmm. talks about you vacation where I work kind of thing. And it's it's so true because it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It is hot. I'm not going to lie. That heat is unreal. That Puerto Rican sun is unmatched <laughs> anywhere else I've been. But, um, I mean, if, if you've watched the show or anyone that's watched the show, yeah. uh, the, the visuals are just stunning. Everything is really that vibrant in real life. And, um, I mean, dream place. I'm, I'm more of a warm kind of gal. I don't love the snow, even though I did grow up in Utah. Um, I, I'm more so tropical, so it's, it's good for me. Oh, no denying that. So, you know, um, you seem to be a very, um, you know, insightful person. Think about things, think about what's going on in your life. What do you think someone watching Fantasy Island, what the, will they take away from it? You know, it's a big um, show on wish fulfillment, of course. You know, this is a, we're a, a re um, imagination of the classic one back in the 70s. And um, I think a few other people have tried to take stabs at it in the movie. But um, with this particular one, we just wanted to go deeper, you know, with, with the stories of the characters of the host. Now you actually get to know Rourke and Tattoo besides just an intro of, welcome to fantasy island you know and there's deeper meanings behind things but what i like about that is that every guest star that comes on and their character that they have has something that anyone can relate to you know it's kind mm -hmm. of like the 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 wink at be careful what you wish for kind of thing but at the same time it's very therapeutic to watch and at least that's been my experience of acting on the show is it's been very th therapeutic as an actor to have such deep stories, it, even though they keep it fun and cute because it's Fox, they still do do the extra walk and the extra effort to make it relatable. And there's been plenty of people that have watched the show and reached out and been like, wow, like, thank you so much for that episode. That made me think of my mother and like she passed and that was kind of really just comforting to watch, you know, and it reminded me of her and stuff like that. So it's nice to know that the writers um, are using even their real scenarios of life experience and putting it into the work. And that's connecting on an energetic level past the TV screen to people at home. Well, speaking of some of these guest stars, a former Las Vegas headliner, Marie Osmond, Terry Hatcher, what has it been like to have these you know, show business stars come on to your special location for different episodes. I mean, are you kidding? It's like Candyland for an actor. It's so awesome. It's like, in what other scenario would I be meeting Marie Osmond? But mm -hmm. here she is in the makeup chair and we're giggling and, and cackling about anything and everything. And um, by the way, she was incredibly sweet. Like I just amazing. Um, but in those situations, I'm just like, is this my job really? Because every two weeks, every two to three weeks, we get a new person come, come to literally the island, Puerto Rico. And um, I get to meet with these legends and talk with them. And they give me such amazing advice. And it's the coolest thing. I mean, it's, 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 a pretty sweet gig. <laughs> yeah, I mean, over the years, me and my colleague featured calm as Jay Bill seen have had the chance to, you know, have on the likes of Dion Warwick and mm -hmm. Ruta Lee for different legendary conversations, you know, and we've had many of the greats over the years, like Robert Wagner and the late Ernst Borgnine. So it's just, you know, the people from the past are from the golden era of Hollywood, and we're just all lucky to be in their presence, basically. Absolutely. And I bet you get so many cool golden moments when oh, you're- Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, you know, we've gotten to meet a bunch of people over the years, you know, got to meet Aretha Franklin in 2014 oh. before uh, she passed away, got to see one of her last concerts. Just so it's unbelievable, you know, like 
you know, you shake a lot of people's hands in life, but I will remember that and what her hand felt like when I shook her hand before wow. we before we took a picture. Um, you know, so moving forward, I want to talk about your co-star Rosalind Sanchez, who's also a past C U interview guest. I interviewed her years ago on South Beach when she was um, uh -huh. doing an event for a cover on a magazine. Just the sweetest person in the world. Of course, the first thing you think of is rush hour, but um, yep. more than anything else, what's it like working with her every day? Um, amazing. We've become such great friends. I was very nervous when I first met her. I remember like the, our very first initial meeting because the casting and situation, it happened so fast and, um, we didn't get to talk previous. So we both flew out really? to Puerto Rico and uh, got settled and everything went through all the COVID protocols and then met and we're just like reading cold reading with each other and getting to know. And I was really nervous. And as soon as she came in at the time, she was getting off another show, uh, filming in Miami. And she had just like cut some bangs and she was growing them out, made a whole joke about how like her hair is um, whatever and this and that, and just broke the ice. And there was never this feeling of like, oh, she's here, I'm here. She just made me feel like, hey, you're like you, you deserve to be here obviously for a reason. And, you know, let's connect and have fun. So um, just humanized the entire situation and made me feel incredibly comfortable. She's freaking hilarious. Like I, I can't stop laughing around her. Um, and same with um, John Gabriel Rodriguez. He's like another amazing friend. We just got incredibly lucky. I'm not just saying this because I know that it's not like this on every set, you know, not everyone connects so well, but we just, if, they're ever the bloopers that they took <laughs> during our filming. Cause we played them at the like finale, like end party for season two. You'll see how much we are just cracking up all day long. So um, she's just, she's just wonderful, wonderful woman. So compared to a soap, how many takes do you get on a TV series? Oh yeah. It's amazing. I, when I got there, I was like, wow, you get more than two to three takes. So much so that, oh, we've been shooting this one scene for like almost an hour, <laughs> you know, like, wow, this is so great. I'm laid back, man. I am just chilling because I'm so used to fast, fast, fast. And so now it's just trained me to be on a, on a film set or, you know, working in TV and just being totally relaxed. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been in the high pressure situation that this is like perfect. <laughs> so let's talk about your talk theory podcast. Um, they always say that if you can have a conversation with yourself, record it and then broadcast it to other people and you can do that for a long time, you're quite the one who can have a conversation with yourself. And I think in your podcast series, you do, but you do it so well that 20 minutes or whatever it is passes by so quickly. So mm -hmm. what side of this, where does this come from? Has this always been something that you like, like to think about your life and then kind of share it with other people because you really do a good job of that? Oh, well, thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate that. I really, that's, that's very um, kind for you to share. I, for a while, for the past like two or three years, I, I wanted to make a podcast, but I was just kind of shy and nervous and, you know, like, oh, does the world really need another podcast? You know how everyone feels when they want to do that one thing that they actually love to do. And um, I have just had so much experiences within my life and seeing so much change and having friends around me that I would share these things with and they'd be like, Kiara, this is like really cool stuff. Like you could impact people's lives just telling about your own experience. You know, what do you have to lose? You know, the right people will find you kind of thing. And so I just, after season two, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to come home and just do it. Just do it. And I, I'm passionate about it and about the, um, spirituality manifesting and all of that because I've lived it and I've seen my life do a complete 180. I used to be in a very different place mentally and, and just what I thought was possible for my life versus where I am right now. And it's all been 
through self-help and healing and, and going inward. And so my thing is I'm not, you know, a gatekeeper. I'm like, I'm so excited when I find something cool. I'm a sharer too. If you ever go out to dinner with me or a lunch or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And if I have something delicious, I'm like, you have to try that. I'm just always, you know, because I have an affinity of seeing people happy and, and really excited. I it's, like my favorite thing to go to a certain restaurant where you know the chef loves what he does and he's just joyous about making the food or even going somewhere to go shop, but that person loves fashion. So they love, you know, it's a different energy when you're around people that are truly passionate about what they do because it just transmits to you. So yeah, I'm just a big sharer at heart and I love seeing people succeed and, and do new things. And if I can share the things that I've done to help ease that way along, then here you go, you know, have a free for all. It, it's just kind of, and also um, it's therapeutic to just kind of talk things out as well. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, talking about, I listened to, you know, four or five of the episodes over the last week yeah. as we were getting ready for this CY interview debut on YouTube today with you. And I'm just going to dive into it because Valentine's Day is coming up, but I really liked your relationship episode. And I thought about something that is just kind of connecting to you as an actress, but just in general, you know, I think we grow up watching soap operas and movies and TV shows and so many other things and we consume so much and we think, as you say, some people think love should be hard, but really yeah. love should be easy in that I think you explained it well that a relationship when you find someone who you really connect with and it's working out, it just flows so naturally and easy. Mm -hmm. And I think the reality is, is that in this day and age today that we have to come to the realization that not everybody is for everybody, something happens comes and goes no one is going to match up with anybody a hundred percent but the reality of what it comes down to love should be easy because both people should be on the same page and i think you in that episode about love and relationships and your experiences described it so well and i related to it so much mm, thank you yeah it's been very interesting too and you know i've just decided to be as transparent as possible with the podcast. And that's why I talk about, you know, going through a breakup and, and, and the healing stages of that, and then getting back into dating. And, you know, I was in a relationship for four years and then getting out of that and being like, well, I don't even know this world anymore. What's going on? What is the dating apps, you know, and just like kind of, you know, falling my way through it. But I'm glad that I did and, and experienced those things because it strengthened the, the, uh, the, the knowing, you know, the uncertainty ended up strengthening the knowing of what it is that I do value in a partner. And, um, and I realized that our reality is really what we say it to be. So in that episode, I say, you know, if, if you think and you believe that, love is just meant to be hard and it's a struggle and da, 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 then, okay, that's totally okay. But that is going to be your experience. But I made the decision that um, love is meant to be easy and effortless and flow. And, and you should just be having more of a good time than a bad time. You know, that should be the more normalization is that when, when it's really that person, you'll know, because it's, not hard, you know, it's just in flow. So, um, but these are things that I've been learning and, and understanding through my experience, but I'm, I'm really happy that you connected to that. That's, that means a lot. Well, that related to a, you know, a past relationship I had, maybe multiple ones, but it's just kind of like we're going through this learning process with somebody and we have mm -hmm. to, we have to get to a point where we realize, you know what, we, there is someone for everyone. Maybe it's not the person that's in front of you. And are you being honest and authentic with yourself with that person? Or are you wasting your time, but you're also mm -hmm. wasting that person's time mm -hmm. as well? So it's just kind of like, and I think also we're in a world today where both men and women can pursue many of the things that they want to pursue in many professions. And we're not limited. You know, history is, has shown us that. And all of us are doing you know, have a chance to pursue the things we want in life so then we can make choices when it comes to love and relationships as well. And the world is more accepting of people being who they want to be as well. Mm, I agree. Yeah, absolutely.
you know, so moving forward on that, just to focus on a few other things, talk about your acting career and then a, fun, a few other things. What else, you know, aside from the great TV show you're on right now, obviously, Fantasy Island, what else would you like to pursue in your acting career? Oh my gosh, so much. You know, I've been really into Dune right now. I feel such a, like, I didn't realize, I don't know if you've seen it or watched it or watched the old one. The movie, right. Yes. Um, okay, I just sure. got into to the books. Um, I watched it about, it's been the third or fourth time I watched it. And every time I watch it, something pops out at me. Because for me, it was really the cinematography for the first time that I've seen something in a long while where I've been like, oof, this is very interesting. Um, and it's just really deep, you know? And the whole movie is really about um, getting through fear and breaking through that. And um, yeah, I, I just, I love, I love um, film and TV that I can connect with like spirituality and life and like the idea of um, timelines and space, like even the Doctor Who verse is really intriguing to me. Um, Kind of like sci-fi stuff is really, really fun just because I'm so intrigued by the fact that we're all these humans with these souls on this earth that's spinning around in the galaxy. You know, it's all very heady. And so I find it interesting when people um, kind of inject and insert that within in movies about energy, time, space, and like what our mental ca capabilities can actually change. Um, so I'm really intrigued within sci-fi space because usually that's where they do all that kind of fun, you know, trippy stuff. Um, I love, yeah, Dune. I would love this dream role is to play Storm in the Marvel verse. That would be so cool. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm open. I'm really just open to whatever's going to align with ever is my highest good, like, and for all. I, I want to connect with roles that just feel good. I'm really, yeah, I'm just really interested in roles that make me feel good, um, which who knows, you know, that's the cool thing is there's so many people creating stuff and so many stories to be told. So I'm open. I think that we will see you in a superhero theme something soon, um, TV, series, streaming, movie. I think that is definitely in your future. I could absolutely see that. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I love action. I love that stuff. So, you know, hey, I'm here. We'll see what happens. So being from the West Coast, growing up in Utah, living in Los Angeles, uh, Las Vegas is a 45-minute plane right away. Any Vegas memories? Have you been here? Any stories? Planning to come here? You know, I need a redo of Vegas. I, I went once when I was young, when I was like 19. Well, I well that's think. different. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I was like 19 or 20. I went with a with a friend and, and me Where and you her can't there. do very much. <laughs> no, we didn't. We just walked the strip and there was a lot of chaos happening. And I was like, I don't know if I like Vegas. This is a lot of energy. Um, but I think I need a redo as an adult. Mm -hmm. And perhaps I would like it a little more, you yeah. know, trying it again. But um well, I yeah. always like to tell people that don't come here, you know, we are now the shopping capital of the world. There's more shopping, luxury shopping done here than anywhere else in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. There's more live entertainment going on every night of the week than any place in the United States of America. You know, um, we have everything here, shopping, entertainment, cuisine, some of the best cuisine in the world. And there's just so many things to do here beyond the gambling and beyond all that stuff. Now, of course, you know, we're gonna have the Super Bowl next year, professional mm -hmm. sports is here, and uh, wow. we have just grown so fast. Um, actor Mark Wahlberg just moved here. There's a lot of celebrities in Hollywood, and it's just, you know, it's the reality of what it comes down to is, is that if you come here, it's overwhelming, but if you plan ahead, it won't be overwhelming. I always tell people, well, come up with a plan before you come here, because then you're just kind of, you know, you're sucked into the vortex of, oh, what's yes. around me, and what's going on, and this kinds of things like that. So, you know, you know, we get over 40 million people a year, but it's just, you know, living here and getting wow. to experience the entertainers and the live entertainment is unbelievable. And, you know, definitely, you know, you got to come here at some point and maybe we'll do a live in person segment as well. But yeah, you know, 
that, that would be great. So, you know, moving forward, I just want to say, you know, in closing on your, on your podcast, um, very well insightful stuff. Um, I think if most people listen to it and they didn't know you were an actress, they would probably think that you were just, you know, a radio host or someone with a psychology degree or something like that, because oh, wow. you're just very expressive um, in what, in what you say. I guess the thing of what it comes down to is, is that um, what have other people taken away from your podcast, friends, family, things like that? What have they said to you about it? Thank you, by the way, for all of that. Um, we've just, you know, I think the vibe I wanted to with talk theory was to be able to just make it conversational. Like I wanted people to be able to leave and ponder on things and perhaps even like talk with their friends or family. So I think it's been nice to have friends contact me and, and was just being like, hey, I was on a drive and just decided to pop on an episode and it really got me thinking about some things and I actually really appreciate this and that. And so it's nice to know that what I'm experiencing in real time has an effect on people. And it also is a really good reminder to be as present as possible within my in intentions, you know, um, because it, it's very affecting. It, 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 it can being in the public eye and, and having a voice. And I even, I do music as well. And, and I'm just getting more and more of this heavy understanding that what I sing about, what I talk about, the lyrics I write are all being ingested, you know? And so it, it's important to be well thought out within the things that I'm, 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 putting out there you know the internet lives forever kind of thing so you might as well make it count in the best way so it's been just nice i think to be able to have people um, be affected in a positive way and that's been my number one goal is that people can leave feeling better or be able to have a better outlook on their day because <clears throat> i've been and still you know i'm not perfect but nobody is you know have had those days that you feel a little down <clears throat> and you just want to listen to something or watch a funny video or something to pick you up. So it's, it's really, it means more than anything that people are able to walk away from the podcast feeling seen and, and um, yeah, it's, it's been really, really good, really good to be able to do that. Well, we have on, you know, um, CY interview has covered Hollywood celebrities, newsmakers, presidential candidates, doctors, lawyers, all kinds of things. So we have on a lot of different, you know, um, educated and thought provoking people. So I always enjoy thought provoking content, whether I'm reading it, whether I'm listening to it. So it's like when we knew that we were going to have you on CY interview, I, I knew that I had to listen to a couple of the episodes because, of course, we were going to talk about that also. And, you know, one of the things you brought up in closing last couple of topics, of course, you also have a music background. So tell us a little bit about your singing. Yes. Yeah, so um, my artist's name is Kiki Barnes, um, and it's all just I really love neo soul. I really love, you know, acoustic um, I'm inspired by like Amy Winehouse. I'm inspired by, you know, the great Ray Charles. I'm, I'm inspired. I even, I guess more modern, even Adele. I just love people who sing from their heart. Um, and so I, yeah, I'm, I'm not properly trained within guitar or I can't read music, but I do know how to uh, listen for a good sound. So I'm self-taught in, guitar, electric guitar, and the ukulele, and the piano. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I just, music's something that's always come really easy to me. Um, and so I have Sirens to the Moon, which is an EP that's out. That was all about self-development. Um, another EP called Rebirth, and it was just like kind of me coming into this new version of myself. And this new um, EP or possible album that I'm making is called Home. And it's just all about um, not looking for value and, and validation and any outsources, but just me. And finally being comfortable with Kiara and my voice and not trying to be the pop singer, not trying to be the R&B singer, but just making sounds that I like. Um, so that's what Home is about. And that is hopefully coming out in may may to june so i'm really really excited but 
um, yeah, I've, I've always had a passion for, you know, neo soul and jazz and funk and that kind of stuff. Oh, absolutely. So last question before we wrap up, um, I always love to ask people, you know, we know about your acting background. We know about your podcast. We know about your singing. We know the things that you've been on, but aside from that and what you've expressed in your podcast, what do you want people to know about you that maybe you haven't spoken about? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if there's, I'm, I'm kind of an open book, you know, I think so. <laughs> I, you know I'm, I'm very, I just, I love people. I love people and I love connecting and connection. Um, and I'm a creator. And so, you know, I think within my career, even outside of acting is that I just want to make connections and, um, and be able to create art, even outside of music, but writing, I'm currently writing a film right now called In Between the Dust. And for example, it's just like, I've seen a lot of indie films, um, you know, A24 kind of style, that younger um, YA content. And I just felt like, wow, I love these films, but there's not a ton of people that look like me, you know, and why not? Oh, maybe I should be writing these stories um, because if, if it's not me, then when is it going to happen? You know, you can only wait for so long for things to be created, just as I'm sure, you know, starting yes. off with your career, it's like, you know, you just have to just go, I'm going to do it and just start somewhere. So um, you know, I'm just really, really, I value, um, creativity and expanding and connection. And so I'm, I'm pretty much an open book and, um, I, I just love to share and, and I don't know, I'm just Kiara, I guess. <laughs> I think the thing is, is that, you know, me, my colleague, Jay Bildstein, CY interview, my career as a podcaster, which goes all the way back to 2000 when I was 15 years old now, 37 wow you know, the reality of what it comes down to is, is that I just wanted to start talking to people. And then it was mm -hmm. one subject and then another subject and then another subject. And now we just cover everything. And, uh, you know, today we are, you know, from all of the over more than thousand audio CY interviews now joining. And thank you for being our first guest on, on CY interviews, YouTube channel here in Las Vegas. We hope you come back. We will have you back if you'd like for other dis discussions and segments with a variety of other people and yourself. And for our listeners and watchers today, of course, go to CY interview, the letter CY, the word interview.com to check out everything daily at CY interview. Of course, you can also find us on Facebook, CY interview letter, CY the word interview, over 300,000 subscribers and followers worldwide. And of course, if you like this video, like it, subscribe to it. Kiara, thank you so much for joining us on the debut episode of CY interview on YouTube. Anything you'd like to add in closing? I'm just really happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Chris. And thanks for everyone watching and tuning in. And um, Fantasy yeah. Island, Mondays, yeah. and Talk Theory Podcast. <laughs> yes, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay.